here's the problem. Most people, or many people, I should say, I don't know about most, but many people assume that this book really is about a republic, about an ideal city, about a commonwealth. It is not. And Socrates makes this very clear. Now, the rest of the book, and we've only just begun, the rest of, the, of this lengthy book is about the makeup of the ideal commonwealth because a city is an example writ large of the human soul. Socrates says this, I think that we'd better adopt a method which I may illustrate thus. Suppose that a short-sighted person had been asked by someone to read small letters from a distance, and it occurred to someone else that they might be found in another place which was larger and in which the letters were larger, if they were the same and he could read the larger letters first and then proceed to the lesser. This would have been thought a rare piece of good fortune. In other words, uh, imagine yourself at the, at the eye doctor's, the optometrist, and he wants you to read the eye chart. There's a big E at the top, and then, uh, and then every subsequent line below, the letters get smaller and smaller. Socrates is basically saying this. Uh, <clears throat> think of a city as the big E on the eye chart. We can see in the city what is, the true of the, what is true of the soul, because you can see a city functioning where it's hard to look inside a human soul and see the soul functioning. But we see around us in, in, in the world of the commonwealth of Athens, we can see uh, the, the craftsmen and the guardians and the shipwrights and the sailors and the merchants and the, and the, and the, you know, the, uh, we, and, and the slaves. We can see all the different parts of a city and how they work together to make a city function. Uh, the exchange of trade, the, the, the various roles uh, uh, that go into making a city uh, uh, harmonious. If we, th if we talk about what makes an ideal city, then we'll be able to understand what happens in the individual human soul. Now, Socrates probably does have, to a certain extent, in mind um, you know, how we could re make a better city, but that's not his primary goal. Uh, down through history, there have been uh, many people who have mistaken this dialogue as a blueprint uh, for an ideal commonwealth and tried to, uh, and tried to um, uh, create, invent actual cities based on this plan. Right up to the present day, uh, in the 1800s, um, uh, the famous uh, authoress Louisa May Alcott, uh, uh, her father, Bronson Alcott, was one of the transcendentalists of New England, a friend of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson and some of the others. And he participated briefly when Louisa May Alcott was a young girl. Uh, he briefly, in a, in, a, in a commune experiment where he took his family and some other people, moved out to the country and tried to build, the, build a perfect commune. Uh, it failed. Uh, in the 1960s, hippies did this. And there were hippies uh, in, the, uh, in the 1960s who tried to start communes out in the desert or the wilderness. Uh, uh, some of them, at any rate, were reading Plato's Republic and saying, here's the, here's the way we should start a, an ideal uh, uh, community. Uh, a gross mistake. Uh, many of the things uh, in, 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 in the Republic, as we'll see in the next lecture, are things that would not and could not, uh, should not be put into practice. Now, Socrates has them happening in this imaginary city because that's a good expression of what goes on the soul, in the soul, not because he thinks it should actually be put into practice uh, in a city. So the rest of the book is a discussion of a commonwealth because uh, in a commonwealth we can see, writ large, the biggie on the eye chart, what we're really interested in, and that is how the parts of the soul work together.